If you're thinking about buying a home, there are three factors that you absolutely need to take into consideration before you buy any house. Hi, my name is Jose. I'm a realtor with Remax here in the Inland Empire in Southern California. And well, if this is your first time to the channel, first of all, welcome. Always honored to have you here. In fact, actually, be sure to hit the subscribe button right down over here. And then also be sure to hit the bell too. This way you never miss any future content where I talk about buying, selling, and of course, living here in the Inland Empire. Regardless of whether this is your first home or, or your 10th home, there are always factors to consider, such as your expected duration of stay in the house. Sorry, what is he talking about? Yeah, I mean, how long do you plan on staying in the house after you buy it? Yes, I, I know, I know. I, I mean, things could always change, the unexpected could hit, but let's just say this. Let's say nothing unexpected pops up, no, nothing changes, do you plan to be in the house for the next three, four, five, uh, ten years? Or do you see yourself potentially moving out in the next couple of years? Because if you do end up selling that house within the next couple of years after buying it, you could potentially end up losing money if you were to sell the house that quickly. Uh, listen, I, I, again, I get it. I mean, it's a lot easier said than done. To, you know, oh, I'm going to predict the future, Jose. I'm saying this, though. If you already know, going into this, you already know, you have a very strong belief that in all likelihood, Jose, we're probably going to end up having to sell the house and make a move within a couple of years after buying the house. If that's you, I wouldn't do it. I mean, honestly, it's probably gonna make a lot more sense to rent rather than buy. And not what you expected to hear a real estate agent say, right? I mean, don't buy it, but it's true. It's, it, the fact is, it's true. It's going to probably make a little more financial sense for you to rent rather than buy if you already know that's the case. Because listen, depending on where the house is at, depending on how the market's doing at that time, it takes, on average, it takes anywhere from three to as much as six years after you buy that house just to break even. Meaning this, if you were to buy a house today and, and three years from now, you decide that's it, it's done, we're out of here, it's, it's time to move, let's sell the house. After everything, after closing costs, after, after everything's said and done, you're most likely looking at a net of zero dollars from the sale. Meaning, meaning you didn't lose any money, but in all likelihood, you probably didn't make any money either. Here's another one, the down payment. I thought about that. Here's what I mean by that. Far too often I hear people think that you need more for the down payment than, than you actually do. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have heard people tell me that, that Jose, we're holding off right now, but but we're, we're gonna come to you. We're still trying to save for the 20% down payment. Sure, I mean, you can buy a house putting 20% down. I mean, you can put more than 20% down if you wanted to, but yeah, you can buy a house for a lot less than 20% down also. Well, now you've got my attention. The exact amount of the down payment, that's gonna depend on the loan program that you're getting. Like, for instance, with the FHA home loan, in my opinion, a great loan program, by the way. You're only looking at a required 3.5% down payment. Let's say, for example, you're buying a $500,000 home here in Southern California. Well, with a 20% down payment, you're looking at $100,000, but instead, with the FHA 3.5% down payment loan, you're looking at, at only $17,500. Yeah, that's definitely a lot easier to come up with than $100,000. If you're buying a home with a conventional loan, by the way, these are two of the most common home loan programs today. You can buy as low as 5% down. So going back to that $500,000 home again, at 5% down, it's only $25,000. And if you're a first time buyer, you can actually go as low as 3% down with the conventional loan. Of course, there are other loan programs available, such as, for example, you have the VA home loan for, uh, for veterans with no down payment. Uh, you also have the USDA home loan that allows you to buy a home in a rural designated location that with, wait for it, no down payment requirement. Uh, there's also jumbo loans, which these allow you to buy homes with higher prices, higher loan limits. Uh, now, this one, it, it can vary a little bit from one lender to the next, as well as you know, what you, you do qualify for. But uh, you're looking at on average between five to 10% down payment required for the jumbo loans. Here's something not everyone thinks about, but can really be a game changer if you're a first time buyer. Remember we talked about buying a $500,000 home with the FHA home loan, which again, it's a three and a half percent down payment, which is $17,500. What if you could buy a home with even less than that for the down payment? As of the recording of this video, because it, it has changed a little bit uh, from time to time, but 
as of the recording of this video, I believe the current numbers are, you can get up to three and a half percent of the purchase price in money to be used to cover your down payment. And well, if we talked about the FHA home loan that has a three and a half percent down payment, but you're able to get three and a half percent to cover the down payment, I mean, in that case, how much money is actually coming out of your pocket to, to cover the down payment? Uh, nothing. Yeah, and actually it gets even better than that because there are programs that will help you even with the closing cost money too, which is why it's so important to speak with a lender to help you explore all the options that are available for you when it comes to, well, the loan program, as well as the down payment that you're going to need. And if you're here in Southern California, let me know. I'd be happy to refer you to a good lender for that. What about the house itself? I mean, that's probably something pretty important to be considering, meaning this, what are the non-negotiables with the house that you're looking to buy? Such as, for example, this. Maybe, maybe you have three kids and you cannot settle for anything less than a four bedroom home for your family. Or, or, or maybe, maybe let's say you're starting to get up there a little bit more in the years and a two story home, that is out of the question. Whatever the non-negotiables are, it's extremely important to keep in mind. There is a big difference between a non-negotiable and a want. Non-negotiables are, Kind of like the examples I just gave, but a want, that might be, you know, we want a house that has tile flooring and, and no carpeting, or, or we want a house that has granite countertops in the kitchen, or we want a house that has a swimming pool. When it hits 100 degrees in the summer, kind, kind of like it is today, who doesn't want a swimming pool? But if you can't find the home that has all three of those wants. You know, it doesn't have the uh, the tile floor, it doesn't have the granite countertops, it doesn't have the swimming pool. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, those are things that, that I mean, they could be added later. It's, it's not like you, you bought a two-story house, but hey, I needed one story, so let's get rid of the second floor. I mean, definitely a little bit different story. I mean, those are things though that can be added later if that's something you want. And, and listen, I'm, I'm not saying that you should not be trying to find that house. Absolutely, you should try. Uh, I'm just saying that finding a home that, that has the non-negotiables and all of the wants, it can be kind of rare to find that house. Uh, here's what I would say. If you can find a home, it, it again, it meets the requirements for the non-negotiables, but it has maybe, again, in this example, let's say maybe one, maybe, maybe even two of those wants, that's probably a home you may want to make an offer on. Of course, though, if you do have any questions or, or maybe you are thinking about buying a home here or, or anywhere around the Inland Empire, my contact information is below. Otherwise, I, I touched on this a little bit in this video, and that is the down payment. And, and listen, there are actually a few more misunderstandings when it comes to down payments to buy a house. And I recently made a video where I touched on seven of the most common down payment myths. Well, there it is. That's a video I would definitely catch next. Or actually, YouTube thinks you might be uh, might prefer that one. E either way, though, feel free to reach out. I'm always here to help. Thank you.